Welcome and hello. This is a HECRAS support video. And in this video, I am going to be working with culverts in a 2D flow area model. A design storm currently overtops a bridge deck, and we are asked to add a culvert or culverts to that structure to prevent overtopping during a specified design storm. All right, so what I have on my screen here is RAS Mapper. I went ahead and uh, created a geometry and created a terrain. We have one of the results toggled on here. Let me go ahead and just turn on the terrain data right here. And I already have my inline structure that's sketched in here. This is my bridge that crosses over the river. The river is flowing in the southwest direction. And I also have my mesh sketched in here. So we have smaller cell spacing in the main channel compared to the overbank. And we even have smaller cell spacing uh, close to the bridge. I created this bridge as an SA2D connection right here. So if I go ahead and click edit and then check out some of the properties, here is the data. I just called it bridge one. It's 50 feet wide. And I haven't actually called it a bridge for the structure type. I called it a weir gate culvert. And I'll show you why, because once we get to the geometric data editor, then that's um, how we can easily add uh, weirs and culverts and gates. Okay, with bridges, you can add abutments and piers, but I'm modeling this bridge as an inline structure, which may be a little bit different for some situations. All right, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the hydraulic data here. This is the unsteady flow boundary conditions. The bottom boundary condition line is just going to be normal depth. And then the upstream is going to be controlled by a flow hydrograph. I just created this flow hydrograph out of nothing. It's uh, 500 CFS. It ramps up to 6,000 CFS at nine hours into the simulation and then back down to about 1,000 CFS over a 24, 25 hour simulation. This is the plot right here. So you can just see it ramps up and then ramps down. We're gonna pretend this is the 100 year design storm or whatever return period you're designing for. Let's go ahead and take a look at the geometry. So I'm gonna click close that. I need to stop the edits first, okay. And then I'll go up to edit geometric data. This is the mesh you're seeing here in the 2D flow area. This is the bridge right here. And if I open up SA slash 2D connection, this is my bridge. We have a top elevation of the bridge at 16 feet. And then I also have some flow through the bridge structure right here. There's two different box culverts. I'm calling this a bridge, but again, I'm modeling this as a inline structure, not bridge. So just keep that in mind. And then let's see, here is the weir embankment data, top elevation of 16 feet, okay? And then I've already modeled these two culverts as a single culvert group, but it's meant to be part of the bridge structure. So if I open up the culvert editor right here, I'm calling it bridge one. And the span is, let's see, this, the shape is a box. The span is 50 feet. So this just represents a 50 foot opening in the bridge deck at cross section station. 75 and 275 respectively, which is right here and right here. I've already ran this simulation, so let's go ahead and take a look at those results. I'm gonna head over to RAS Mapper right here and then down to the results. Here's the depth layer, and then I also have velocity and water surface elevation. Let's go ahead and look at water surface elevation. Then I'm gonna bring the play bar all the way back to the beginning of the simulation and then just click through over 24 hours. That's six hours, nine hours, 12 hours, 15 hours, 18 hours, 21 and 24. So clearly the water surface elevation upstream of this bridge is higher than downstream of the bridge. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and then right click just upstream of the bridge and then click on water surface elevation. Right now the water surface elevation gets up to almost 17 feet here. Yes, it is actually 17.3 feet. I can look at the table data and get a peak value. Now my time step is only 30 minutes for reporting this data, but I could make it smaller if I wanted to get more precise data, but it looks like 17.33 is the maximum. Now keep in mind the bridge deck right here is 16 feet. So we have water overtopping the bridge deck by 1.3 feet. That's way too much. Say for instance, I arbitrarily decide that we need at least two feet of freeboard for this uh, bridge during the design storm. So two feet from 16 feet would be 14 feet. So what I'm aiming to do here in this support video is to add 
culverts to this bridge deck such that the resulting water surface elevation from this design storm peaks at 14 feet or below. So here is the 14 foot mark right here. We need to add some culverts to reduce that peak water surface elevation on the upstream side of the structure. If you're curious about the downstream side of the structure, no problem there. You can see it peaks at 10 or 11 feet. So that's not a problem at all. Let's go ahead and uh, go back to the geometric data editor and add some culverts. So I'm going to click on the SA slash 2D connection here, and then I'm going to click on culvert. All right, let's go ahead and add a new culvert group by clicking on this button. I'm going to go ahead and rename it to something like, I'll just call it row one. So I may add a second row later. Who knows? Click OK. The shape, I'm going to go with uh, circular and box are the two most popular. I'll go with circular. Now, some of the design ideas and restrictions will apply based on your particular bridge, the jurisdiction, the structure, the availability, of the materials. There's a lot of different factors that go into which different designs and alternatives you may want to model and then propose to the client based on the, the cost of the materials and uh, constructability as well. So a lot of different factors that I'm kind of glossing over in this lesson. I'm just talking about uh, getting the model to run and getting some lower water surface elevations. For a diameter, let's go ahead and say six feet. Again, this is just another decision variable that could vary. Perhaps your diameter cannot exceed more than six feet. So let's go ahead and just say six feet diameter is the maximum culvert size. For the culvert length, let's just say that's the same thing as the width of the bridge itself. And then I got to add a coefficient loss here. Let's say 0 0.02. And then for the invert data, that'll be, what do you say, four feet. So fairly close to the bottom of the, the bridge structure. So four, both on the upstream and downstream side, that's fine. Okay, let me move this over here. Now it's time to add some barrels. So I'll say B1, and then that will be, we'll see the diameter is six feet apart. Let's space them, say 10 feet apart on center. So the first one we could put at maybe 140. This is the bridge cross section or the cross section stationing. Let me just add a few more here. So I'll say 150. All right, I got in six different barrels here. So B1 through B6, those are gonna be positioned at the cross section station 140 down to 190. All right, so if I click OK, I should now see them appear here in the cross section display. That looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and close that dialog box, file, save my geometry now. Now we can go back to the unsteady flow analysis window right here. I have my base geometry, which is what I just edited. And then the unsteady flow file, I just called test, but that's what that hydrograph was. It's a 24 hour simulation one minute computation interval, and I'm recording the mapping output interval every 30 minutes. Okay, so we are ready to run. I'll click the compute button. All right, that finished up. I'm gonna go ahead and click the close button. Let's go ahead and take a look at those results. The 2D flow results look better in RAS Mapper, so that's why I selected RAS Mapper here. I'm gonna click on water surface elevation. All right, just upstream of our bridge, I'm gonna right click plot time series, water surface elevation. Now it looks like there's a peak water surface elevation of 14.83. Let me open up the table here and then come down to around nine o'clock, 9.30, 14.847. So that's a big improvement from what was it, 17.3. We came down about two and a half feet. It's no longer overtopping our bridge, which has a top cord elevation of 16 feet but it's still not giving us the two feet of freeboard we need. Uh, this number needs to be 14.0 or less. So let's go ahead and do one more modification to our geometry and add a couple more culvert barrels. So I'm going to go up to Edit, Geometric Data Editor. I'm going to click on the SA slash 2D connection. Next, I'm going to click on the culvert button right here. And then for culvert group, I want to make sure to select row one. This is the circular culverts that we just added earlier. I'm going to come down here to my culvert barrels. So I'm going to add a B7, a B8, and a B9. Okay. So I'll just continue the 10 foot spacing. So I'll say 200, 210, and 220. All right. So I'll click OK there. Those three new culverts have been added. I'll go ahead and close, file, save the geometry data. 
Now I'm going to run the simulation once again. Compute. All right, we are done with that simulation computation. Let's check out the results we have in RAS Mapper. Again, I have water surface elevation selected here. I'm going to right click, plot time series, water surface elevation, and it looks like we are down to 13.66 feet as a maximum water surface elevation. Let me go ahead and check the table data. And sure enough, right here at 13.67, 13.66, that is our maximum water surface elevation. I could actually change the time step to report more often than every 30 minutes to get a little bit of a more precise number here, but I'm fairly confident we are at most 14 feet and have satisfied this uh, requirement that I came up with for this support video. Well, that was it for this video. Uh, what we did was model a bridge as an inline structure so that we could add culverts. Then I also created a hydrograph for a design storm and then ran the simulation and monitored the maximum water surface elevation as I added additional conveyance capacity through that structure.